Um, also, this video will be posted on our YouTube channel. If you have not checked that out later, it will also be posted here on our sites page. Um, obviously, when it's done and fixed and edited, it will add that video directly in here as well for a future reference point for those that want to learn more about news sites. On this page alone, um, for those that are joining live, can actually click and navigate on these hyperlinks directly. Or if you're watching this video at a different time, you'll be able to navigate through these different hyperlinks and resources on this page. Notice that Google does provide, or on this page, you do have a cheat sheet, a Get Started, and a Google Help, which are Google resources that are always up to date and great resources for you to learn more about new sites. What else is on this page? If I scroll down, you will notice there's additional resources such as other YouTube uh, channels that you might want to check out that you um, may want to explore. If I don't hit every topic, which I won't, uh, you can check that out. And also there is a third party app that we do still do support is Awesome Table. And in a sense that we support, um, you can check that out if you want as well. Um, this is new sites. This is not classic sites. Um, classic sites is going to be deprecated. So this is just for a small amount of users. So this should not apply to you, but just know that there is some classic site resources for you if you are in that migration process. And those people I have already discussed and we had a transition plan already in place. So that project is pretty much done, but I just want to let you know what that is. Probably does not pertain to you. You're here to learn about new sites and how you can build your own site if you choose to. So what we're gonna to go to next is the slide deck, which is a very valuable resource for you today. And this is what we're going to use for today's training. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up in full screen and go ahead and walk through this slide deck. Again, this is going to be both presentation mode and demonstration mode, um, but we're gonna go ahead and dive into the basics and then we're gonna demonstrate those basics um, as we go through this training today. There is a lot to understand what you need to know about new sites. You can see on this slide deck, it's a hyper or interactive um, slide. So if you wanted to actually break down and learn how to create a site, you can click on create a site. It will take you to that particular portion of the slide deck. Also, when the video is done, the video link will be directly here as well for that particular area um, for those that are watching this at a later time. So it will be um, broken down in YouTube chapters in this area, um, the best of my ability. So you can always break it down to see both the written instructions per se, and then you have the demonstration portion here in a minute. So anyway, this is a great table of contents for you to navigate. Maybe you're struggling in one particular area of new sites, you will be able to navigate through here as well. But as you can see, we have a lot to go through today. So we're gonna continue on. What is new sites? Pretty much all of you pretty know pretty much know what it is. It is a way to build a website. Um, I create a one-stop destination. I also call it a one-stop shop sometimes. It's where you can put all your important information, such as videos, images, calendars, presentation, documents, folders, text, YouTube channels, YouTube links, anything that you want to put on there. Also, I have on this particular slide, I have added the Google help resources as well. So you can go them, go to them directly as well. But it's very similar to a Wiggly or a Wix that maybe you've seen on advertisements on TV. It's very similar of a drag and drop concept um, to create new sites. It's very end user friendly. And we're going to go ahead and dive deeper on this as we continue on. What are common uses for new sites? These are just some examples. Um, internal project hub. So you might have project A and you want to put all the materials there in one stop shop. You could do that as an example. These are just some generic examples that you can use. The other one is a team site. So for example, we could have a Google team site. Maybe it's got some resources or quick answers, FAQs that we might use for tickets, or maybe it's a project that we're using within the internal site or for our team. You could create a team site as well. Um, you can also make it a public facing website. Um, we kind of already have that with the Okta website. The Google Hub website are two examples of Google sites that are public facing. So we have the Okta site and the uh, Google Help as just two examples of public facing websites. Agency portals, this is highly used. I can think of several agencies that have created new sites as a portal. Um, OCIO is one of them. We have an OCIO Connect 
which it means it's only shared to our OCIO employees that are in the state of Iowa, um, obviously OCIO employees, and they can actually use it as onboarding, offboarding, supervisor information, um, maybe a calendar, maybe an activities committee. Um, there's a, several other agencies that have this as well. If you really want to see more examples of that, please drop me an email and I'll help you out and give you the people that I do know of that have made other agency portals. How to create a new site. This is where it's slightly different than what you think in creating like a Google Doc or a Google Slide. Um, there is some limitations when creating a new site. So my question back to you was, can you create a new site? I don't know. I don't know you on the other end. I could look it up. If you send me an information, I can help you out with that. But that's not very friendly for you. You want to know right now if you can create a site. More than likely, you know if you can because you've created one maybe in the, in the past. But if you're not sure, what you're going to do is you can actually go to sites.google and look like you can create a site, just like I can create a new site but you won't be able to publish. That would be that you are not a creator. You are not a creator of Google Sites. Doesn't mean we can't grant you access to do so. It just means that you do not have permission to create a site. As you can see on this very first screen here, let me get my laser pointer. This one is the answer is, can you create a site? The answer is no, because you cannot publish a site, okay? Um, if you can publish a site, that's more than likely you are a creator, okay? Or you are an editor of a site. So all else fails, if your answer is no, you're gonna go to this and you're gonna follow the instructions here. Um, every, uh, some agencies have an agency technical point of contact. You can contact them first if you know what that means. So if you know what your agency technical point of contact is, um, you could contact them and say, hey, I want to create a site for a portal for our agency. Oh, awesome. Then they can follow their own internal steps to do so. Um, if you still can't quite get the answer there, go ahead and complete a service now ticket and we will add you or grant you access to create a site. This has just been in place for quite some time. This is just how we can kind of restrict those that can create a site um, and just kind of keep it um, more restrictive in a better sense. For those that can create a site and your answer is yes, congratulations, you can go to a new site, go to the URL and I'll show you this in a minute, or you can go to the waffle that I call it, the waffle, and find the site's logo. Now it's going to be kind of deceiving because some of you are like, well, I can go to the sites, I can create a blank one, but the thing is some of you can publish and some of you cannot. So if you're like, I really want new sites, I have a great um, business need to create a site, I just cannot publish it, then just if you want, you can just fill out a ServiceNow ticket and I'll pick that ticket up and process it as needed. Um, so with that, I'm going to continue on. So first step, you're going to be like, I thought we we're going to talk about sites. We are. <laughs> we are definitely talking about sites. But I'm going to give you some um, best case scenarios, best practices. And that first best practice is to create a Google Drive infrastructure. Okay, Google Sites and Google Drive are besties when it comes to creating a website. You need to create a Google Drive or shared drive folder infrastructure. Doesn't matter if it's Google Drive or shared drive folder. I would be hesitant on a Google Drive. Maybe you might want to create it under a resource account um, just because if employee A leaves, not that the files won't be shared and distributed the same, you just have a little less control. Uh, so keep that in mind. A shared drive folder is a great concept um, regarding um, sites because then it belongs to the domain, right? So if employee A leaves, it's belonged to the domain. Uh, we've got it both ways um, because we didn't have shared drives. So this is the uh, main reason is it's one location and your permissions can be granted easier, okay? So this is an example. This is an example of my drive just for this case scenario, it's in my drive. I have a good folder infrastructure called Google Teams site. And then I have folders inside there. With my drive, you can set granular permissions a little bit easier than you can in shared drive. Again, it's your case scenario. I'll be more than happy to discuss what might be best for you. Again, we have both. I'd have the PI site, the project investment site is under a my drive infrastructure. But the Google team site, the Google Help Iowa page is on a shared drive infrastructure. So it just depends. 
um, on your business needs, but both of them, regardless when you are creating a site, I can't strongly emphasize, have a good folder infrastructure, okay? Step one, so important. Step two is pretty simple. You create a site. You can, like I said, you can create a blank canvas or select from a template. Um, I'm gonna be humble and honest. I do not like the template gallery. I don't like templates very often sometimes when it comes to creation um, because you already have something in mind. So I guess if you're new to new sites, I would encourage you to maybe play with the templates just to kind of mess with it and see how it's designed. That's an option. But if you really want, you're probably going to want to use a blank canvas, which is what we'll demonstrate here shortly. But you can go to the waffle and you can find the sites icon and go there or um, and select blank or choose the template gallery. Step three is to customize your site. Uh, you can customize your site and homepage. So this is kind of Google's recommendations on how you follow these steps. And we'll go through these in a minute as well. You would add your site name, that's very important. You also have a site name for the public or maybe it's your portal, like OCI Connect, Google Help. Those are two public names, but I might have a Google website as my site name, right? So there's two different site names. More than likely, they can be the same. If you actually have a homepage title, which is your homepage of a site, uh, and then you can customize it to fit your branding guidelines, such as choose a theme, choose your font style, and choose your background image. So again, this is very important. Google has made some major enhancements regarding themes in the sense of making sure you can fit your branding guidelines. So it's really kind of a nice feature to give you more flexibility and make it more look like, I don't know, a OCIO website, right, with our colors. So that's step one. As I, or step three, excuse me. As I go through this, I do want to remind you, I'm kind of known for providing you a plethora of resources. Uh, one, you'll notice at the bottom of each slide, maybe not each slide, but most slides, there is a learn more button. You can always click on the learn more and it'll take you to more information on that particular slide. So if you want to learn more about step three in this particular slide, you can click on learn more and it will take you to an external page regarding this topic. The other thing is once this video is posted and on our YouTube channel, this will also take you directly to this particular page, a particular spot in the video regarding step three, et cetera, step four, depending on where we're at. So again, a lot of ways to find short snippets of information um, within the slide deck and on our YouTube channel. Step four is to add pages and navigation. Again, this is kind of where you're whiteboarding and brainstorming. So many times you might be um, getting a whiteboard and thinking how many different pages you might want, what's our purpose of our site, and then you're going to start building, right? You still, I'm not talking about the brainstorming portion of this, but that's kind of what you normally would do, right? And I would strongly encourage you to brainstorm before you start building because then you're, it's just better practice, okay? Lessons learned on my end as well. Um, add pages and navigation. So you can add pages and sub pages. Um, you can choose your site navigation. Some of our sites that we have created um, have the sidebar on the left-hand side, like the Google Help website has the sidebar navigation on the left, but sometimes we've had things on the top. So you get to choose where do you want the navigation to appear? We'll go through that. Sometimes it's just a hidden page on the website that you don't really need a navigation, either on the sidebar or on the top. So you can hide navigation. You know, sometimes we use sources such as like um, Google Helps resources, for an example, or a page to OCIO website, something that's outside the page itself, and you want it part of your navigation outside of your website, excuse me, outside your website, and you want it to go to an external link, um, you can add a page link, and we'll do that as well. So again, you really need to kind of think of how you want to create your website and how many different pages and subpages, and think of how you want your site navigation. The good news is you can adjust these pretty easily. Um, so if you don't like the top, you can want to change to the side. It's just going to look different, but it's, it's an easy fix, easy change. Step five is probably the most cumbersome portion of the building of a site is your content, right? Content, content, and content. Um, you got to add a lot of different content to make your website look and have the most accurate information. This also goes back to step one. If your content is in a Google Doc or a um, Google Slide or Microsoft Word or whatever the case may be, where do I tell you to store it? I would store it in Drive. 
okay? You need to store it in Google Drive in that nice folder infrastructure. So this relies back to step one. If you've got images, store it in your folder infrastructure. It's all located in one spot and your permissions will also be very important on this as well. So again, your content, if it's embedded inside the site and it um, can be stored in Google Drive, which most things can, that's where you put it, right? Um, so, but you, it's easily, easy to add content into a site, such as adding drive files, as I just mentioned. It could even be a Microsoft Word file if you want to. Um, you can also add a table of contents to image carousels, which we'll do, buttons and dividers, YouTube videos, calendars. Those are just a few that we're describing here today. There's a lot more other options. Um, you can also embed forms and charts and et cetera. So you will see in the new sites, there's quite a bit of options and we will not go through every single one of them today, but you'll be able to quickly find where that is to add that content if you choose to. And again, if it is a file that can be stored in Drive, get it in that Google Drive infrastructure, okay? Step six is share, preview, and publish your site. You have preview, so think of it as a, let me look at it before I go. So let's think of it as a possible, let me see how my device looks. How does it look like on any device before I go live? You will have, when you do preview, you will have the option to look at it as a mobile, um, a, uh, an iPad, a, a mobile device in that sense. Uh, so you've got tablet, excuse me. You've got mobile, tablet, and uh, computer screen. You'll be able to see the different layouts of that particular page um, when you click preview. So it's a great way to like, oh, that doesn't look very good on mobile. And that's pretty much our audience. That's a great way to actually look at it and then make adjustments if need be. So it's just a preview, not published. It's just a preview. Um, you actually can copy the publish link. We'll show you that as well. You actually have an option to share. So in this, a lot of my examples of sites that I have created, I have shared with Jolene. And the beauty of new sites versus classic sites is that we can be on the exact same page at the same time working on the sites. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate that today because I don't have another person to collaborate at the same time, or obviously it could be synchronously, or it could be opposite times. But with that, keep that in mind that you can work on the site much like a Google Doc at the same time. So that's huge because usually when we have to create a site, it has to be done in like three days, okay? Um, so that's really, really important to be able to collaborate at the same time in those examples. So you can share um, to your team um, via Google group or individual and give them rights to um, edit the site if you need them to be. Then you publish the site. Um, you can um, publish the site to make it live. Publish is like make it live. I'm ready to make it live. Okay. So you got preview to see what it looks like before it goes live. You have the option to copy the published link. You have the option to share with other coworkers if you choose to. And then you have the option to publish and review the changes before you hit publish. I know this is a lot of information, um, but this is why we're gonna definitely do a lot of demonstration on this to give you more of a understanding as we navigate through. Now, so what we're going to do today is this is the demo portion of the training today. Uh, with this, this is the site that we're going to make today. It's not beautiful, but my concept and my idea of training this is to show you different things. Like, this is not how I, this is not a site I would actually publish out to the web. It's really not um, perfect by any means, but I want to show some of the different ways to add content, different navigation. And since I only have an hour, I want to make sure I get you through as much content as I possibly could. So before we go through the demo, this is the after, right? This is what we hope to make. It might not be exactly what we make today because I go off tangent from time to time, but this is our goal to make today. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this site. Let's just take a quick look at see what we're going to do today. First of all, you'll notice at the top, we added an announcement banner. Um, I added an announcement banner, check out new shared drive training page, and it will take me to that particular page, learn more. So I have an announcement, could be weather related, could be sites down, um, can I log into Salesforce right now? Um, hey, don't forget about the new conference that's coming up in next week, right? You have an announcement, it stands out, up is up at the top of the bar. This is the published version, so this is the live version. Um, we have a header here um, of the site, which is Google Help. 
um, we have a section here of welcome. Um, then we have some calendar buttons here. Or excuse me, we have some buttons right here that will take us to different pages of the website. Okay, I added a red divider. We have a footer down here, which we're going to add. Okay, I am using the top navigation up here. I have to take me to the calendar page. We're going to show you how you can embed a calendar on here. We have a newsletter section. Um, we have a collapsed text here, you can see, and a little image on the left hand side. So we're using some collapsed text grouping and um, we have some subpages up here, okay? Um, we have training, um, notice it has some subpages. We're going to work with Google Drawing today as well to show you how you can make um, buttons in a different way um, to add a little more flair if you choose to. Um, and it will take you to those particular pages as well. We actually have an example here of an image carousel not a great one. Like I said, we're here just to give you the content to know how to do it. Not that it's like exactly what I would do, but there is an image carousel here for you. Um, I'm doing some customization here with some blue. Um, this Google Workspace Learning is an example. It will take me now to an external site. This is an example of adding a page to an external site that could be part of the navigation up at the top. So that's another example of things that we're going to go over. So again, um, let's go to quarter one newsletter. This is an example of embedding a Google Doc, um, again, and going from there. So as we try to build pretty much the same exact site, you can see it's maybe not completely exactly the way we want it um, in a sense of a published version, but we're gonna go over some of these um, main topics today. So that is the after, um, what we're going to try to create today. So we're in the demo portion of this. I'm keep coming back to the slide deck because it'll be my breaker for the YouTube video. But step one is how to create a Google Drive infrastructure. Many of us know how to create a Google Drive infrastructure. I'm just going to point out some things that you can do with this nice Google Drive infrastructure. This is an example of a My Drive infrastructure, not a shared drive. Okay, I have a folder infrastructure called Google Team Site, and I have shared the parent folder Google Team to the DZZ Google Team group, okay? It's a Google group and I have provided them edit rights to the top layer. So up the top layer, I have given Trainer13, who will, I will be today, is the owner and I have provided access to the Google Team, okay? And the Google Team will have edit rights throughout the entire shared, to the entire um, folder infrastructure, right? So we know that because we understand drive um, training, right? So now, but I have decided that I have a folder called private. Um, I'm gonna back up just for a second. Notice as well as everything else, this is also shared to the Google team, but it's also the general access if anyone with the link access. Now I want you to think as we demonstrate today's training, the purpose of this site is public facing. I do want this to be available to non-Googles, users and Google users, okay? I don't have to do that if it's a portal like OCI Connect, right? But I do want this site that we're doing to be anyone with the link access. So if I'm embedding files inside there, they also need to be set to anyone with the link access, okay? And when you create a good folder infrastructure, you don't have to think about making that individual file anyone with the link access if it's inside this folder infrastructure. So this is really helping you without having egg on your face and seeing that request access when they should have access to it because you've already put them in the correct folder infrastructure that infrastructure that already has anyone with the link access. Okay. Now in my drive, you can make it granular permissions, right? So in this case, I made private, not anyone with the link access. Private would be an example of communications that need to go out. Uh, maybe it's conversations of what we need to do. Maybe it's our brainstorming that doesn't need to be shared to anyone's link access, but at least I still want it to be in the same infrastructure of my Google team site, right? But now I can granularly restrict that and take anyone the link access off, but still give my team edit rights as shown on the screen. So keep that in mind as well. So again, it's a one-stop shop in the sense of your hub, right? You have your site in there because sites, are stored in your Google Drive as well. 
you have your content, your images, your drawings, your Google Docs, your presentations, your uh, Google Sheets, your forms, your charts, all in this one infrastructure, okay? So that is step one. Let's go ahead and navigate to Google Drive and look at it in, in um, real time here. So I'm in Google Drive and I'm going to locate that folder, Google Team, that we just saw on the screenshot. And you can see that I have the same permissions. I'm gonna click Share, and you will see that anyone with the link access as view only, and I have provided a Google Team editor rights, okay? And I can then click on my private, and you can see over here in the eye screen, um, it's only the Google team and it's not anyone with the link access. So if I put a file inside the training document, we also know it's going to warn us, create and share, and I'm just going to call it test. And once we know that, that, that document is already anyone with the link access because it's inside that folder infrastructure. Okay. So that is, if you would don't understand that portion of this, please go to the Google Drive training and that will be more than happy to go over some of the sharing permissions that can be set. If you are doing it in a shared drive environment, we do have another resource for you on the shared drive um, Google help page. So um, you can look at how permissions are granted in both environments, both my drive and shared drive. So again, step one is very important. I have just made some generic folder infrastructures. Kind of you will notice that some of these folders are very similar to the pages that we will be creating today. Um, home, is there resources that I'm putting on the home page? Probably a good place to put that would be in the home folder. That's an example. I also have a training page. I would probably think the training documentation should be in the training folder inside my drive folder. Same thing with newsletter, okay? An example of private would be like our communications. Um, again, I don't know if I put that in there. Yep, communications. That's not on the site itself. It is just a draft that we send out to publicize and tell them, hey, check out this website. Okay. So again, a one central location in your Google Drive is step one, and it is a very, very important step. Okay. Step two is to create a site. Um, so how do we find Google Sites? Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Step two is to create a site. So I'm gonna go ahead and open a new tab. And I just wanna show you that you can go to sites either by going to the waffle, which is what I call the nine inch grid or the waffle, however you wanna call it, and you will locate the site icon. Might not be in the exact same location as I am displaying today, but it is there for you. You can click on sites. You will then see that you have the templates, um, template gallery if you want. You can see there's some options here for you. Again, some other great case scenarios on how to use sites, uh, maybe give you an idea. Again, I'm not going to use the template gallery. I'm going to also create one from blank so I can click blank sites. Okay, I do wanna just pop out in my drive for a second. You can also go inside here and go to File, New, and click Google Sites here as well. Now, if you don't see Google Sites here, that's also going to give you another visual indicator, if I remember correctly, that you're probably not a creator, okay? And if you're not a creator, you will then need to submit, submit a ServiceNow ticket, and um, we will get you set up as a creator or talk to your technical agency contact and they will get you set up to be able to create new sites, okay? So you have both ways to access that. Um, so then we're going to, that is creating the site. That's it, it's finding new sites. So let's go back to our slide deck. We have done step two, we're just rocking it out. As I mentioned, the content one is where we're gonna be at for quite some time. Step three is to customize your site and otherwise giving it the branding guidelines that you want to fit those needs, customize your site and adjust your homepage. So we'll be here for a little bit, but we're going to um, determine what kind of color schemes we want to use and et cetera. So let's go ahead and customize our site. So I have this site up here. 
first thing we're going to do is add a site. I'm going to add a document name. Okay, the document name is the document how you're going to find it inside your drive or in your sites.google. So I'm going to go ahead and just say for today, I'm going to call it example Google team. Okay, because I have another Google team one out there. Um, so example Google team. Now this is my site document. I now want to add the public facing portion of this website. Okay, I'm actually adding the entire site name. So I'm gonna do it a little bit different. I'm gonna say Google help, okay? And I'm gonna type in Iowa, okay? This is the site's name, okay? So I'm going to then um, go ahead and add a header. So I'm going back to the website here is customize your site and homepage. So we've done this portion, we've done this portion. Now we are adding a banner here on the homepage, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So you'll notice up here, it's kind of got an already generic theme, um, but we're going to notice too that you have under the banner page, you have under the banner section, you have options to upload an image, which is what we're going to do, but you also have different selection types regarding size and display. Well, in this case, I don't want title only, which we will be using here quite frequently, but I do want it to be a banner size, okay? So I'm going to keep it as a banner, but now I want to add an image to kind of recognize it with the Google Help branding. So I'm gonna go ahead, you can upload from a computer if you choose to, that's an option. If you have something stored somewhere else, that's an option. Um, for today's training, I have everything pretty much stored in Google Drive. So I'm going to go ahead and select an image. And um, this is, I'm going to go ahead and just go to my Google Drive. But note that you do have a gallery of items that you can select from that Google has provided for you. Um, so keep that in mind. But again, I want to use my branding guidelines. And I have a file called Banner. It is an image type. I know that because um, that's what I'm searching for. I'm searching for images, right? I'm searching for images, and this is a banner type, okay? I'll come back to you on how I created this. You'll also notice that I did put a 13 by 17 pixel. Um, that is just kind of letting you know that's the good width of a site banner, so be aware of that. that 13 by 17 is a good um, recommendation. It doesn't have to be, but I've given you some recommendations for that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit select. Now, I don't want this your page title on top of my image, okay? So I'm gonna click on the blue box that gives me the title, um, your page title, and then you have a text box um, navigation option up here. Well, obviously my goal is to remove your page title, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the trash can. So now I'm getting to look a little bit like that demo demonstration um, website, as I mentioned earlier. Um, you can always change it, reset it, change your image, keep trying. Believe me, I have had to do that numerous times. So if you don't like it, doesn't seem to look well, um, don't like it when you preview it, you could always change image, reset, change the header type, remove the banner. Again, all that is right here. And notice the selection line. I am currently selected in the banner area. So that is the item that I am editing as well. All righty. So let's go ahead and go to themes now. We're still in this step three, customize your site and homepage. I currently do not have a theme selected uh, or a custom theme, excuse me. I do not have a custom theme selected. It is defaulted to the simple one, which I could use. That's fine. You do could absolutely adjust any of these themes that have been created by Google and adjust it just slightly. Um, but I would prefer to actually customize it to fit our guidelines, okay? You also have the option to import a theme. So if you are the website editor of a agency a lot, um, you can always provide them a copy um, and, and give them an import theme of that particular site so they can match your guidelines pretty easily that way as well. But for today, I'm going to go ahead and create a theme. So I need to call it a theme. So if you're familiar with slides, slides have something very similar. It's called theme builder. It's new sites. It's, it's just a similar concept. You create this theme to match throughout, to give you consistency throughout the entire site. 
Same thing with slides. Theme builder is the same concept. You're building it the way to stay consistent throughout your site. Okay, so we're going to call it um, example Google Team. Okay, so more than likely, again, I'm going to stick with the agency guidelines. You probably have a logo that you want to put. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and click on the add logo. And I'm going to go ahead and select. Select's going to pull up my drive. Upload's going to pull up my computer. I'm going to go ahead and hit select. And I know um, I have this Google logo right here. I'm going to use this one for my example. Okay. But obviously, you can search, find it, locate it. Again, I'm not going to go over that portion of it. Okay. That's why it's really important to have it all in one spot. Okay. You can add a banner image. I'm going to use the same image um, just to make it easier, but you can change that as well. Okay, so now I'm kind of using the same um, logo for both of them. Again, this is up to you on how you want to change that. It tells you what, sh what does what. A logo appears at the top of your site. The banner image shows the background um, for a header section. So again, two different case scenarios. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. I'm going to skip this part, okay? Um, but this is where we're going to come back to it because Google is going to use this artificial intelligence to help me determine my color schemes. I don't want to try to do this and find all the hex codes, which I could do if you know them, because some people have communication guidelines and know their hex codes. If you know those hex codes, you can customize it directly from here as well. But with Google, I never remember their hex codes. So I'm just going to have Google do the artificial intelligence and tell me which one's the blue and the red and the yellow, et cetera. Okay, but if you know them, please go ahead and add those hex codes. And if you know, know what a hex code is, you can definitely Google it. But it's just how it tells you what color each um, icon or which color is what by a certain code. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click next and ignore this. Um, for OCIO, the next question is what types of font? Um, Roboto is our recommended choice for Google or for OCIO. Arial might be a, or a common one for you. But again, I'm just going to stick with Roboto because that's what I know. Again, follow your own guidelines. Go ahead and create a theme. So now you can see that we have a theme already created over here. And now we have an entire theme navigation over here. We can talk about colors, text, images, navigation, components, and spacing. The thing is, is I don't always know the answer to that until I start building. That's me. Might not be you. Maybe you know exactly what colors they need to be. I know exactly what text size they need to be. You can do that right here and now. But again, um, for training purposes, we're going to come back to each one of these sections when time is needed or when it's needed for me to go back and adjust that. OK, so one of the things that I do want to go back to, though, is actually the color one. OK, I'm going to go back and click on the palette. I'm going to click on the palette. Um, yeah, I think that's where I'm going to go. Now, Google has already done its portion for me. Notice it's picking from the logo. It already pulled those hex codes from the logo that I uploaded earlier. And so I don't have to guess. Um, but I really like the red, the yellow, and the blue. That matches my how I want to display it today. Okay. All right. But if I'm still not happy with that, I can always click Customize and still make adjustments here if need be, if it's not quite right, OK? And you'll notice this, this color palette will be applied to the entire site and replace existing styles in your theme. So be careful if you don't want this to happen to a current site, OK, that you are um, now implementing the theme portion. I'm going to go ahead and hit Change. OK, so now we've got the colors kind of set up. We have the font set up and so much more. All righty. So now we're going to go back to the slide deck. We have completed step three. We have customized our site to where we want to be at this current time. And we have added something to our home page and got the banner going. OK, so now we're ready to navigate to step four. Step four is to add pages and navigation. And we're going to try to do most of these options. We're going to do a new page, new link, and a new menu section. Um, we're going to try to do something very similar to what it is showing on the screen. 
but we won't do it all at once because that's not real life, right? We kind of know how we want to build it, but usually you're adding content throughout, right? So we're going to kind of do that same thing here as a real case scenario. We're going to add our main pages. We're going to have a few pages all ready to go. But like in real life, we're constantly adding content on the site as we build it. And so you will see us doing that um, throughout the rest of this training, adding more pages throughout um, step five when we're adding content. OK, but we're going to get some of these pages updated um, right now. And so we have something to work with. Right. we got to have pages to work on. Right. To add that content. So let's go back to the site. And we'll go back to you'll notice over here, this is our navigation. And let's go to pages over here. You'll notice this is your pages. So this is kind of like your navigation. So there's three tabs. Um, we have insert, which we will come back to when we're working on the content, which is in the next step. But we have pages and we just left themes. OK, so let's go ahead and go to pages. And now we're adding our navigation and our pages and our sub pages. At the bottom of that page option in our navigation pane, you have a plus sign. Notice the plus sign, it will default to the new page. But if you want something different, such as new menu section or um, full page embedded or new link, um, you will have to click on the other icons appearing here. OK, but most of the time you're going to click on new page. This is one of the ways to create a new page. Let's go ahead and click new page. Our first page that we're going to create today is calendar. So remember, we're still building that same site that we saw earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and click calendar. Do notice there is a drop down. You could always customize the path. This is more of an advanced feature, but right now we're not going to discuss that. But if you know what that means and how to customize a path, you can do so from here as well. But for us today, we're not going to do um, advanced custom paths. I'm going to go ahead and just name that page called calendar. And now we have a new page called calendar. Now you've been in any of my trainings before. Google likes to give us three dots. We always have the three dots means dot, dot, dot. Google's got more for you. In this case, make note of all the options that you have when you are creating a new page with those three dots. You, if you hover over that three dots on a page um, icon, you have make it a home, came, a home page, duplicate page, properties, add sub page, hide navigation, and delete. Okay. So again, three dots dot 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 google's got more for you so where did i find those three dots i hover over the page that i'm selecting and you will see the three dots and you can make a choice and that sometimes can be very user friendly like i use hide navigation quite often and sometimes i go back to properties and we will demonstrate duplicate page at a later time okay so be aware of that so i'm going to go ahead and create another page the next page we're going to create is training and again, this is just kind of a rinse and repeat. We're just building the site. And the next one is I'm, I'm going to add a sub page. Now, I can add a page here and then drag it to make it a sub page. Or I could go under training and add a sub page. OK, so I'm going to click on the three dots and add a sub page. And this sub page is called Google Meet because that is one of the trainings that we have hosted. And now you can see it is a sub page of training. So if I um, close that um, carrot and I expand it, you will then see Google Team as a sub page of training. OK. All right. The next thing I want to show you is section headers. This is brand new. Um, so we're going to show you what it can be used for, and then we're actually going to adjust it. So the next one is we're going to do a new one. But this one is menu section. And I, I'm not used to this because this never worked this way for me in classic sites. But now it's a nice feature. This is a newsletter is what I want to call this section header. And I have two pages that would go underneath this section header, which would be quarter one newsletter and quarter two newsletter. That's my brain's thinking because I already have this all on a whiteboard. I kind of know what my site's going to look like or what content I want to add, right? So I'm already making that decision. You guys might not be able to read my mind, but that's what I'm thinking. OK, so notice the icon is different, but you're like, I still don't get what this does. I'll show you in a minute. So I'm going to add a sub page. I'm going to do a sub page just slightly different this way. I'm going to click on the new page. This time I'm going to call it quarter one. 
newsletter. Now, it doesn't look like it's a subpage because it's not. Right now, it's just in order up here. But the thing is, is you do have drag and drop um, capability in new sites. I want quarter one newsletter to be a sub page of the newsletter. So I can hold down the quarter one newsletter and drag it and go inside the newsletter. Now it's a sub page of that quarter or of the newsletter. Okay. Now, what is the section header? Now, remember kind of the different in step six where we talked about preview, publish, share, and et cetera. Well, we're not live yet, right? But do I want to use a section header? Do I like my banner? I kind of need to look at this for a minute. So you have an option up here. It's the preview. Preview does not mean it's live, but you have the capability of seeing it in different environments. You'll notice you have the computer large screen environment. You have a tablet and you have a mobile. OK, so you get to kind of see what it looks like. Now, I'm only concerned about right now is what is this newsletter section header? Well, you'll notice that the newsletter, you guys can't tell us very well, but when I hover over the newsletter, it is not a true hyperlink, okay? It's just a section header. But if I hover over quarter one newsletter, it will take me to the newsletter page, okay? All right, same thing with training. Training is an actual page. If I click on training, it's an actual page. Newsletter is just a header of the sub pages that we have. Okay. I don't really want it in that concept in this particular site, but it can be very useful. That's a nice feature. You have a section header, but you don't want to duplicate the content and have it in both spots. Now you have a header called newsletters, and I want all the sub pages underneath to display. Up to you, but now you know there's a power of choice. Okay. So I need to change that. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of preview mode because I can't do anything in preview except preview it, right? I don't want it to be a section header. Unfortunately, you cannot change this. Um, I believe not. Nope. You cannot change this. So the only option is to delete it. And notice when you delete, this is an example of deleting, do you want to delete the nested pages? Nope, I don't want that. I already have the quarter one newsletter. I don't want that deleted. So be careful when deleting things. Make sure you read the information that's popped up. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the section header called newsletters. In my case, in our demonstration today, I want to click on new page and I want to call newsletters and I want it to be a normal page. And then I'm going to do the lovely drag and drop and I'm going to then put quarter one newsletter underneath there, okay? Now, we know there is more pages to be created here yet. We have one more to do now, but there is more that should be created, and we will do that at a later time. As I said, as we're building the site, we need to add more content. Then we might think, oh, we need a new page for that because that's real life. The other thing we need to do is remember we did have a page called Google Workspace Learning, and that went to an outside link correct? So let's do that example, okay? We have an option over here under the new button. You do have one that's a new link, okay? So you can make a navigation page that will take you to an outside um, URL. This page, I'm going to take it to the Learning Center. So I'm going to go ahead and click new link, and I'm going to name the link and call it Google Learning Center, okay? Now, notice it says open in a new tab. That's good navigation when you're taking it to an external site, okay? So I, you guys don't have this, but I, to keep my script going and make sure we don't spend time for me looking for sites, I have the link to take me to that learning center, ready to go. So now I just need to paste the link in there. So it could be, um, you know, Google Help, could be any kind of website that you want. It just put that link that you want to take them to, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit done. You'll notice this time the link is slight, the icon is different. It is a link icon, which is telling you it's taking you to an external site. Okay, so now we can just quickly preview. Let's just quickly preview. Um, we have newsletters. It's an actual page now. Um, let's get out a tablet so we can see it better. We take it to Google Learning Center. It's going to take me to that website. Um, we have newsletters. It's going to take me to newsletters now. 
we had the quarter one and you're like, why does the headers look so funny? We are going to fix that, okay? But that's currently how our navigation is going. But now we need to make a decision in this step three is where do we want our navigation? This is currently the top navigation. So this is an example of top navigation. Let's make sure you know what the sidebar navigation is and where to change that. Because some people prefer to have the navigation on the left-hand side versus the horizontal. It's a preference thing, okay? It also depends on how many menus you have. So how do you change your um, navigation? You're going to go to the gear. The gear is the cog. And you'll notice in the gear, the settings, you have a navigation and you have an option for top mode or side mode, okay? So I'm gonna to toggle to side mode and I wanna give you guys a preview of that to understand what that looks like. Then you can see over here, now we have more of the older style, but it's still very useful, useful um, very common. We see that still because it helps, especially in very in-depth websites. It's kind of like a site map. Um, so you do have it on the side now, okay? It's your choice, but you do have the choice on the left or you do our, the sidebar or horizontal if you choose to, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and change it back to horizontal. I'm gonna go back and I call it horizontal, that's what it used to be called, excuse me. I'm changing the navigation to top, okay? There's no wrong answer, it's your choice on how you want to handle that. Um, all right, so we have now determined our navigation. We have made a conscious decision to keep it on the top. We have added most of our pages, but not all of them. But we know by now we can drag and drop. We can adjust it that way. And we also know we have the three dots um, because duplicate page can make a huge difference. Hiding your navigation can be very important as well. And we know down here we have the plus sign and have those different options to add those pages as well. Once your site does get bigger, because one of my sites does have like 350 pages, Please know that you do have some search capability up here. So if you're like, where is the calendar page? You can search, which can really help you find that page to either adjust the content of that page or adjust the navigation of that page as well. So um, in your larger sites, this can be very beneficial um, and going from there, okay? All right, let's go back to our slide deck. We're on step four we are completed um, and we'll continue on step five step five is where we'll be here for probably the next 20 minutes is we have step five which is to add content to pages we're going to add text divider buttons calendar and etc okay so our goal is to add these different types of components onto our site um, and going from there okay each one of these links will each one of these words will take you to additional help regarding each one of these you will know that I will not be able to go through every single one of these today, okay? Because I'm already running a little long. So keep that in mind as we navigate, but please know there's additional resources at your fingertips on this slide deck as well. And you will again, will find this um, creating new sites very user-friendly once you learn some of the basics, okay? So step five, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to add content, added text to our homepage. So I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to the homepage over through the page document. And I, again, for time constraints, I have already created the con the text because you're not here to watch me type. I'm gonna, I got some words here. It says, welcome to Google Help, et cetera. And now I want to add it to my homepage. Some things you can do when adding contact or content is you can do option one. You can always double click. I double clicked there. You will see then you have the options to do images, embedded, dry files, upload, or text, okay? I find sometimes this doesn't have all the bells and whistles that I want um, in the sense, it's just a quick way to do it when you just quickly adding text or so on. So do use the double click, um, but for today, probably most of the time, I'm gonna go to the insert menu. I'm gonna go to the insert menu and you will see the same options. These four buttons right here are more robust. You do have more capability inside here, um, like uploading from a computer is an option. Um, you do have other options down here that do not show up in the shortcut, um, such as calendar, maps, docs. It just, there's workarounds, but this is, if you're new, 
um, please use the insert just to get yourself familiar and then look at the different options that you have. Okay. So I'm going to add a basic text box. I'm going to click on the text box as shown. And then you can see the blue horizontal lines that around the selection box. I'm going to go ahead and hit paste in there because I've already copied it. Okay. Now with that, let's go ahead and look at it. Right now, my text um, undo. I'm in the wrong thing. Why do I keep doing that undo? Okay, so I have pasted inside there um, and I want to like make contact us a link. So I'm gonna highlight the word contact us and I wanna make it a hyperlink, okay? So notice up here, I am not gonna go through every single one of these options here for you today, um, but do make note that you have all these formatting options within the text, okay? You also have options to change the type of text. Do you want this to be title, header, subheader, or small text? If you're used to for paragraph styling that you're used to in Google Docs, it's the same concept. It's very useful to use paragraph styling both in Google Docs and in Google Sites, especially when you want some tags or hyperlinks to those headers. So again, I cannot emphasize enough, don't go by the default all the time. If it's supposed to be emphasized, choose a different type, title, heading, or subheader at least, okay? Um, you'll, under, you'll see that later as we go through. But for today, right now, we're just going to go ahead and highlight contact us. I'm going to highlight the word contact us and choose the insert link. And you'll notice you have the option to link it to certain pages on the, um, on the website. But right now, I'm going to actually type in an email address. Okay. I'm going to type in an email address and I'm going to hit apply. Now, most people like links to be blue inside a website. Well, why is mine not blue? Well, let's go back to our theme and adjust it. This isn't a great example of adjusting the theme as you go. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on themes over here, and I'm going to edit the theme that we have created. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the three dots, and I'm going to choose edit. And this time, the link option is under components. So I'm going to go ahead and components, and I'm going to notice that I have all these options here, button, divider, link, and image carousel. So I can adjust my theme so I don't have to think about this each time. So every time I add a hyperlink inside my site, I want that color of the link to be blue. Notice then contact us change to blue. So anytime I add a hyperlink throughout my site today, it's going to be the same blue throughout the site, unless I decide to adjust it individually, but not at the theme level. So again, that's under theme, under components, and this time I changed the link. Okay, now I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to go back to insert and I want to add a divider. So I'm gonna go ahead and click insert and choose divider. Now, this time the gray is fine. I just wanted to stand out a little bit more. Again, maybe not best practices, but that's what I'm going to do for demonstration. Um, I'm noticing then it's a different section and it's got the divider. I want the divider to be red. So I'm gonna go to themes and I'm going to change the weight of the divider to five. So now it's thicker and I'm going to choose red. Again, maybe that's not what you would do, but that's what we're going to do. So we've added some text. We have now added a divider. And the thing is, the beauty of this um, creation of new sites is we can always drag and drop. Um, so we can always move the divider if we want to um, by selecting it and then moving it to the top if we choose to, or if I want the text could go down here by dragging. So the drag and drop is something that makes new sites very user friendly. Next thing we're going to do is add a button. You can add buttons inside new sites. You'll notice the insert, we have an option to do button. So this time we're going to make a calendar button. And now I want it to link to a page in the website of our current website. So if I couldn't see the calendar showed up, I can start typing in the word calendar because that is a page of my site, right? And you can see that calendar is on my site, it says this site. So I want to link it to that page called calendar. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And you can see now it says the name of the button is calendar 
and page equals calendar. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and insert. Okay, I actually want the buttons to appear at the bottom of the divider. So I'm just going to drag that underneath that and I'm going to actually, um, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to make this a little bit faster. I'm going to go ahead and hit copy on the calendar. So I'm doing control C. I'm doing control C on the calendar. And now I'm going to do control V as in Velcro. And now I'm going to drag this up and I'm going to double click and change it from calendar to, forget how many buttons I have, calendar, I think it's newsletter. And this time it's not going to be to the page newsletter or calendars, it's going to be newsletter. Okay, update. You can repeat that same process. I'm going to hit copy and I'm hitting control V as in Velcro. And I'm now pasting newsletter and I'm going to double click. And I want this one to be training. And the page is training. Okay, I'm going to now, I'm moving it and I'm adjusting it. I want this kind of be centered. So I'm just adjusting, you can see the grid lines. So there we go. But if you remember from the site earlier, um, we go to the home button. Um, I, oh, I can't remember, whoops, a little different. I will make the blue, I told you it might not be the same, but I want them to be blue buttons, okay? I want them to be blue buttons. So let's go back over here and let's go to themes. And remember, our buttons is a option under components, right? So under filled buttons, I want that to be this blue. Notice now it's blue. Um, I also want my outline, in case I do time to use an outline button, I have that option. And my text button is going to say black. So now all my buttons are going to be blue if they're filled. An outline button is going to be the blue outline is going to be that color, okay? So now that makes it consistent, okay? So if you want, you can always change these to outlined or text, however way you want. So you do have some capabilities to adjust it. If you ever need to go back and edit, you just click the edit pencil and you can change the name of it. If you want, um, you can always delete it as well. So don't forget that there's other options um, as you're navigating through a new site for making new buttons, okay? So I apparently forgot to make this particular section um, yellow. So let's do that. So notice this section, Welcome to Google Help Iowa, is currently white. Notice the palette, if I click on that, I have three different styles or I can insert an image. This section is currently the white style. I want to do style two, which is the yellow. A little more obnoxious, um, but I don't want, I want it to be that way, okay? I apparently have lost my divider. I'm not sure what I did with that. I might have gotten click happy. There we go. There we go. So there, we've got the home page ready to go with some buttons. Um, we added a divider. Um, it used the gray divider in this particular theme because it was the yellow theme. So you've got different um, themes that are different, different um, options for you, okay? So we're getting there. So now all these pages will go, this one will go to the calendar, this will go to the but newsletter, and this one will go to the training page. If you always can click on the preview option and then determine that. So you can see it's going to go to the calendar page like it just did. Okay. So if you're unsure and you're new to this, always go to the preview. The next one is pretty easy. We're going to go to the calendar page. We're going to go to pages and we're going to go to calendar. First thing we're going to do is remove the image called Google Help for State of Iowa. I don't want that on every single page. I just wanted that on the home page. Okay, that's my preference. Just throwing that out there. It's too cumbersome. I just want the title of the page to appear. So if I just want the title of the page to appear, I probably need to change the banner description and I'm going to choose title only. So now we have calendar as the title header. I think red is a little obnoxious. Um, so I'm going to now decide to change calendar to a different theme. So let's go back to our themes. 
And this time we're actually under the, I forget where this one's at. This is under text, I believe, navigation. Oh, there it is, it's under colors. It's under colors. So I would like the titles and headers to be the blue. So now the titles and headers are blue, okay? And sometimes, to be honest, you just have to play, okay? You just have to play. So this is um, how it works to just that is an option. You can always go here and do it as well, but you can find that's going to be a lot more cumbersome, especially if you have a lot of pages to adjust at once, okay? So now we're going to insert a calendar. Now, I'm not going to show you how you set up the calendar on the permissions, but I have created a calendar separate for this Google team, okay? I have already done that in Google Calendar, okay? So now I want to embed that Google Calendar. It could be a training calendar, it could be whatever the case may be. You will need to make sure the calendar permissions are set for those people that are going to view this site. So in this case, this calendar is set for public for people to see, right? So be aware of that. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and go to insert, and there is an option to insert a calendar. And then it will pull up the calendars that are under this account. In this account, I'm going to go ahead and choose the team calendar as an example. It's a calendar that I've already created inside my calendar app. Okay. So now I'm going to click on that team calendar and I'm going to click insert. Now you can always expand it by clicking on the buttons and make it bigger, wider, and longer if you choose to, okay? Again, that is one way to adjust the size. In this case, I want to just embed the calendar on the entire page. Now, you can always pop up. Anytime you see this icon, you can always pop it up into a new tab if you choose to, okay? You also have the option to click on the gear. In this case, this gear has a lot more settings. I'm not gonna go over that, but if you want to know for each icon content thing we're adding to a website, you might want to check the settings because the settings could adjust, be adjusted to fit your needs. In this case, I'm not gonna make any adjustments. Um, I could, if I wanted to, I can change the default view mode to be month, week. Um, I can um, have users view time zone, et cetera, navigation buttons on or off. There's quite a different settings. Maybe you want this to be a certain way. So always check out the gear. So now we've added the calendar. That is one option to add more content to your website. The next one is a collapsible group. In that case, we're going to do the newsletter. So the newsletter, we're going to now just quickly change the header to title only, okay? That's just a repeat from previous. Now we're going to, to show you what we did on this one. The newsletter looks like this. Um, we have quarter two newsletter, which has a hyperlink. And we have quarter um, one newsletter and an image on the side. It's collapsible text. Okay. So that's what we're trying to make right now. Okay. So we're going to go back to insert. And this time it's collapsible group, is what it's called. I'm going to go ahead and click on collapsible group. I'm actually going to just drag this in a little bit because I want real estate room for my image icon right here. Right. So I'm going to add some text here. I'm going to type in quarter one, 2022 newsletter. Okay. Then I have some text already here. Let me grab it. It's a little snippet, right? It's a little snippet. Like, um, let me paste it in here. An effort to continue, blah, 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 it's like a welcome message. But I want this learn more to go to the quarter one newsletter, okay? That's one thing I could do. I'm gonna click on the insert link. And now I want a word text to go directly to a page on my website. So I'm gonna type in quarter one, and you can see that I've already created this page, quarter one newsletter. Then I go ahead and hit apply, or select it and click apply. Now my nice blue text is there, all right? The other thing I could do is I can highlight this one and I can do insert link and do the same thing. So they can actually access the newsletter in multiple places, okay? This is a hyperlink and this is a hyperlink, okay? 
So the, I got my text in there. I've linked it to the quarter one newsletter, which is a page on our website, right? It's a page on our website. Now, the only other thing I get to do on this particular one is insert image, okay? I can double click and choose the image icon and I can type in the word newsletter because I know I already have the image on here. And there it is. All right, looking pretty good. I can always make it smaller, bigger, whatever. For time constraints, I'm just gonna leave it alone, okay? All right, I love this section. It's perfect. I really just need to repeat this for quarter two, right? I just need to repeat this entire section all over again. So notice that the section is all highlighted, okay? The section is all highlighted, not just my text box, right? I want the entire section is perfect. It's not, but we're going to go with it, right? I'm going to duplicate the section. Awesome. Now I just need to edit the content a little bit. So there's quarter two, need to change the text to quarter two. Oh, I don't have a page for quarter two. Oh no. So I'm going to remind myself to go back to it. This is true life. So how I do that, if I know I've got the content in there, but it's not quite right, I will highlight it yellow. And then that tells me I need to go back and fix this portion. That is what I do. I'm not sure that's right, but then I can see that stands out because it's an ugly yellow, right? So what do I need to do? I need to make a quarter two newsletter, right? So let's go back to our pages because now we're in our middle. Let's go ahead and duplicate quarter two newsletter. So I am now under the page tab. I have quarter one, excuse me. I now want to duplicate this page. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate this page and I'm gonna call it quarter two newsletter and hit done. Now I have that here, okay? So now I'm gonna go back to my newsletter and now I'm gonna go back to the obnoxious yellow and click on that and search for quarter two newsletter. And I'm gonna change the text to quarter two's newsletter and hit apply. Same thing for the learn more. I'm gonna do the same thing, change it to quarter two. And now it's no longer yellow. It is yellow, we'll need to change that one. There we go. And it's taken me to quarter two newsletter, okay? So duplicating, can make a huge difference. I can't tell you how many times I duplicate a section. I duplicate a section and then I just make some quick adjustments to it, okay? And if you don't like the section, sometimes you duplicate it, then just delete the section and then you have that as well, okay? All right, let's insert a document. Let's go to quarter one newsletter. Let's go to quarter one newsletter. So what we're doing now, is we're embedding a um, document inside there. That's what we're doing now, okay? So let's first change the header type to title. I'm gonna double click this time just cause we can. And you can notice then you double click, you can choose from drive and you can search. You could go to that folder infrastructure. That's one option. We know that we have this great folder infrastructure, right? And we know we can change the view to list or grid view, depending on your choice, right? I'm over here on the corner, but I'm in newsletter and I want quarter one newsletter under this one. So I'm gonna select that one and choose insert. Now the permissions of this has to be, the permissions of the document has to be the same as the website, unless you want people to see the nasty request access. You gotta be careful on that. So you know that anything that's embedded has to have the same permissions as your site, which we haven't gotten there yet, but that's important to know, okay? This one doesn't have a gear so much, okay? But you can always pop it up if you need to, okay? Let's quickly repeat that same thing for quarter two newsletter. Change the header type to title, double click, not that, 
double click drive or I could go to insert drive either way. But the drive is where we're inserting this. And this time I'm going to just type in newsletter because I don't know where it's stored at. And I can select quarter two newsletter and insert it that way. Okay. And you can make it bigger or smaller, however you want. Okay. You can always make them smaller too. So don't think that you have to have them big. This is just an example. Um, so you can adjust it to different sizes. Okay. Um, next thing is uh, we're going to do um, image carousel. So we're going to go to training page. And same thing, title. Okay. So now we're going to do, we're going to go to insert. This is where you do have to go to the insert. You're going to choose image carousel. And now we're going to select some images. Notice you do have to at least have two images selected. So again, you could upload if you choose to, but for time constraints, I put this all in drive to make it easy. But again, you can upload. I'm just going to select a few here. I'm going to choose docs, drive, just a few of these images just to give you an idea what it looks like. So I have now six selected. Okay. Again, you could go locate these in different locations, but these are images stored in Google Drive. And I'm going to go ahead and select insert. Now it's a little blurry because these aren't great quality pictures and they're a little too big, but you would be careful on that and make sure you have good um, quality of pictures. But I'm just going to make mine smaller. And now it doesn't quite work right here, right? Like I can't tell that it's going to go to the next one. This is where the preview is important. Go to preview and then you can kind of see how an image carousel works. Okay. So sometimes you can't always do everything in the edit mode that you want to like preview it. You need to go to preview. Okay. You also notice this one does have a gear. This means if you want to remove or add different images, you can always do so. You can also add text to these as well. So just know that there's more to this than what I'm showing you. Just be aware of all the different settings that you have. We never ignore the gear. The gear always has more for you. Okay. Gear, gear, gear. Okay. So that's a quick way to demonstrate image carousel. The next thing is we're going to add some more text in here. I'm going to go back to my script here and copy this text. And I'm going to um, double click this time and I'm going to choose the text box. And if you may not have realized this, but I've been using a lot of times, especially when I'm copying and pasting, I want it to stay the default. So I always kind of paste as plain text. I use shift control V a lot because then it brings over the plain text and it will stay the text that I want it to be as the default. Shift control V is your new friend. If you don't remember that, always right click and paste as plain text. That can save you tons of time in formatting. Tons of time. Okay. So now, but keep in mind, sometimes you might want it to be something different. So in this case, I'm going to make this one. Um, I can't remember how I was going to do this. Let's do, let's make this a little bit bigger because I want it to kind of balance out better and center better. So we'll just make it a little obnoxious. All right. I'm also going to change the section colors to blue. And so I went to the palette and I change it to style three, but I don't think it looks great with the black. So I'm gonna highlight this and change the color to white. So you can adjust to your own needs individually. You don't always have to go with the theme, but it does give you like, if you want this to stand out, then add the background color, add an image, change the font color if you want. Those are just good tips and tricks if you choose to. So the section, I changed it to the style three, Still matches our guidelines, just a little different colors. Okay. And then notice my image carousel has slightly changed as well. Okay. Let's go to insert images in drawing. So there is a best friend with sites. Um, not only Google Drive is one of your best friends with sites, it's also drawing. 
I do not have the luxury of having publisher, illustrator, or anything like that to make really dynamic buttons or images. However, I do have Google Drawing. Google Drawing is a tool inside your Google Drive. We did have some Google Drawing training not too long ago. So if you want to check that out, please do so. It's on our Google Help website and, and also um, on our YouTube channel. So if you're like, I don't even know what she's talking about regarding drawing, you're missing out <laughs> too. But you also have a lot of resources at your fingertips. So one of the things, and most of the sites that I have created, the PI site, the Active website, the Google Help website, I did not need Photoshop to make those sites to make some good images. I used drawing, okay? Um, what that is, is I've also provided you in this training some templates. One of the things I mentioned earlier when we were adding the banner, it is best practice to have the banner to be 13, um, 1,317 pixels. As mentioned, it's right up here. So if you're like, oh, how did she make it to fit just right? I don't have Photoshop or Illustrator either. Then I would recommend to make a copy, follow the instructions. The height can be different. It could be 100, 200, 300, 400. Um, but you can definitely make a copy of that. Also, buttons are popular within sites to make it more web friendly. And you'll notice there are some um, other options here. You have a four by four, which is all pixels, by the way, and 200 by 200 pixels. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to actually make a copy of the 200 by 200. Okay. And see how this works. So you can kind of see the process. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this one. It will give you an option to force a copy. So I want to make my own button. I want to make my own button, okay? I'm not going to train you today on Google Drawing. But I do want to remind you, though, that you do have the capability of putting this drawing inside your Google Drive. If this is an image, where should I put this drawing? I should probably put it in my nice folder infrastructure that ties to that site. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Google Team Drawing or Google Team Site. And it's an image because I might use the same image later. So I'm making a conscious decision to stay organized right away. Okay. So then I'm going to move that particular drawing inside here. I am then going to name this one because that's good practice. I'm going to call it Google Meet. Okay. Now I'm not going to, I'm just going to quickly adjust this. Um, image by the paint. I'm just going to go ahead and change the paint into white. And I'm going to um, add a image inside here. I'm going to search my drive. And I'm going to say meet because I have an image called Google Meet. And I'm just, again, not going to spend a lot of time on this, but just going to say Google Meet training. Okay. And I'm just going to quickly adjust this. It's not the best button, um, but we're understanding that we can make these buttons out of here, right? Um, let's go smaller. And we're going to center it. All right, pretty good there. No, it's not great. We don't want a thing over that. No, there we go. All right, not wonderful, but it works. Okay. All right, so now I have made this amazing button. Okay. Let's look at the size of this just to make sure. So I'm going to go to File, Page Setup. You'll notice it says defaults to inches, but I want to go to pixels, OK? It's 200 by 200 pixels, OK? So I'm going to hit Cancel. So that's exactly, I just want to show you, that's the adjustment of the size. And now it is not an image per se. It is a drawing right now. It's the drawing app in Google Drive, OK? But what I am going to do is I'm actually going to download this as a PNG or a JPEG. That is an image file, correct? Both of those are image files. I'm going to go ahead and type in or do a PNG. So it's going to download on my computer. And I have that. I'm going to go ahead and file, make a copy of this one again, because it's pretty much the way I want it. But it just needs to be um, for what's the other one we're doing? Shared drive. I need to do the same thing for shared drive. So I'm going to go ahead and file, make a copy of this one. I'm going to call it shared drive. And the beauty of this, it's already stored in my image folder because that's where I made a copy of this one. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I just want to call it shared drive. And I'm this time, I'm going to right click. This is a great tip. I'm going to choose replace image. 
And this time I'm going to search in my drive because now I need to find the shared drive icon. Look, it's the exact same spot. So I didn't even have to try to readjust it. Okay. So I'm going to download this one as well. All right. Now I will be honest, I would put both of these images in your images folder. Okay. So let's. I would do that just for future. Always put them in your image folder so you have them, okay? That's one thing you can do, okay? So you have a nice image so you're not forgetting to do that, okay? Keep all your stuff on the site, on the on the on your um, folder infrastructure, okay? So now, if I remember correctly, let me pull my site back up. Let's look at training. We got Google Meet training and um shared drive training we have these two buttons okay so let's go ahead and do that and i'm going to tell you i'm going to keep going um as i continue to train today so if you need to pop off the video will be posted i apologize but i do want to go through all this as we go through it okay so with that i'm going to go ahead and this time i'm going to click on images and this time since i have them on my computer i'm just going to go ahead and click upload so i'm going to choose upload and i'm going to choose google meet Okay. Now I did forget under pages, I'm sorry, under insert, there is some content blocks. I'm not a huge fan of the content blocks because um, I've done other things, but I do want to point this out. Um, what you do have is you have a four content block, a three content block, you have a different layout. This can help you if you like these little layouts. So if I drag this content block in here, it does help you determine what it looks like. Okay. Um, I have done this enough, I kind of don't use this. But if you do notice in the site training here, um, it looks great for the three picture layout. I'm giving you hints. If you like the three picture layout, a four by four is great. If you like the 200, or if you like the four picture layout, the 200 by 200 will help you keep those images the right size. Okay, so I'm giving you some help here with my lessons learned, right? So keep that in mind so these different layouts if you're using any, these are the best sizes for you to make it work okay so if you have published or an illustrator just make it those sizes and just know that it's going to work best for those different picture layouts if that makes any sense at all um so i'm going to just go ahead and drag that google meet training in here and i'm just going to adjust it just a little bit and I'm going to now click upload because these are like placeholders, right? These are great for templates. They're kind of like placeholders. So this time I'm going to hit upload. And I'm going to choose the Google Shared Drive and hit open. And there we go. Now I don't need these other ones. So I can just highlight them and delete these groups. And I can add some subtext here. I can say Google Meet training and I can do shared drive training and I could adjust this to make it small text because it's kind of like a caption right I can make it small text okay well this is great two buttons but what does buttons need to be they need to have hyperlinks right so I'm going to click on the insert link and I want it to go to the meet page same thing with this particular link. I'm going to highlight the text and it needs to go to the meet page. And I'm going to apply. Now we both know we forgot the shared drive training earlier. So we notice under here we do not have the shared drive as an option. Okay. So just to remind you, you can just quickly duplicate that page, call it shared drive. And now you have a shared drive page and you will need to change the title. And you need to change it to title only. Okay, so let's go back to training. Let's go and insert this image. And we're gonna type in the page drive. And same thing, we're gonna do insert shared drive. All right. 
uh, not perfect buttons. I know what I did, but if you get the concept, you will be able to adjust that. But now we have these fancy buttons. You've seen these buttons before. You just clicked on live stream buttons earlier. But those are really good ways to check that out. Um, the other thing is you do have some, when you're dealing with images, you do have some options to crop. I'm not a huge fan of that, um, but you do have some options there. It might work great for a gallery. Um, you have the option to uncrop, link, delete, and by now, three dots. If you this is a public website, we should always worry about accessibility. And when that comes, um, adding alternate text is very important. So please note that you do have that option to add alternate text to any image on here as well. That is under three dots. You can do that. So please be aware of that with any images on here. Um, you also have replace image. Again, if you have not concept, got the concept of replacing images, that's very important because when you replace an image, it will keep it in the same spot. So if I click um, upload, it's going to hit share drive again. It's going to be the same image, obviously, but the links and everything else is well, should have. Well, should have. Maybe I didn't link it. I should have done that. Maybe I didn't do that one. Anyway, it should stay. Okay. All righty. So that's how that works. So replace image can be your friend. Okay. Um, the other thing is you can um, insert uh, YouTube videos and slides. So let's go to the Google Meet training. And let's go ahead and go to the Google Meet tape page. And I'm going to go ahead and change the header type to title. This is an example of adding a slide deck and a YouTube channel. So let's a uh, YouTube link. So you'll notice that's something we do here. Um, I'm going to double click, choose drive icon. And this time I'm going to go ahead and go to my folder infrastructure to show you how important it is. We know we're on the training page and I have some sessions here that relate to this, which would be my Google Meet. And I have a Google Meet slide deck. I'm going to go ahead and insert that slide deck. Again, you can make this smaller, bigger, however you want. But I cannot emphasize enough to always check the gear no matter what you're embedding. There's always different things. Maybe you want that slide deck to auto start and loop back. That would be another great example because they get to see what all the content is showing on the slide. You can go ahead and do that. So you can always insert. Again, permissions are very important. I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to expand this just for a second and Um, I'm not going to actually. I'm going to go ahead and insert a Google Doc on this one as well, just to show you side by side. And training, and I'm going to go to sessions. And again, you can search if you choose to, but I do have a Google Doc as well. So I can insert both here. You can choose what you want. And you can again can see sometimes I want that big YouTube video link. I can't get it through here. I could try preview. That's an option. You do have more capability in preview. Okay. The other option is always to pop it up. Okay. So it depends on what you're looking for. But I do just want that YouTube video right now, the link to save me time from navigating. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that link. All right, I'm going to go back out of preview and I want to show you how you can embed YouTube as well. You can always go to insert YouTube over here and you can obviously type in the keywords and search or you can paste that URL, which I thought I just did. Which I really just did think I copied that. Um, let's go back to the thing. And I'm going to go to YouTube. There we go. So I searched for the YouTube URL. And now I have selected that YouTube that I want. So you're just going to get the YouTube URL or you can search for it. More than likely, it's always better to get the URL. I'm going to hit insert. 
And now I have an embedded your um, YouTube video here. You could do the same thing with Google Drive um, by double clicking and choosing the embed option. You can always choose embed, copy that URL of that Google Drive folder or file video and paste that in there and it will embed that as well. So you can embed things multiple ways. If you have the URL, it's going to embed very easily, okay? So it could be a URL from Google Drive um, and so much more or YouTube, especially any Google Workspace environment um, applications. If you have the URL, it's going to um, embed very friendly for you, okay? That's kind of a shortcut that I do. Um, but again, if you're not familiar with some of that, then definitely use the image, um, the insert options on the right-hand side. So now we have this YouTube video. Again, this is where preview is your friend. You can click on the preview and you will see all the different options you have here now, okay? But again, if you haven't learned by now, we always wanna check the gear because each one of the applications that we have have different things, right? Um, so like in this case, the YouTube video has different things, high controls, progress report, allow full screen. Those are all important different things for each item that is selected. So we have added a lot of content. There's a lot of things that we haven't gone over, such as cloud search, placeholders. This is brand new. I haven't even tested it. Social links is one. Um, maps we haven't done. We've done docs. We've done slides. Sheets works the same. Um, forms and charts are all other great examples of things, but we kind of did hit some of the big ones, um, especially like buttons and collapsible group, um, such as um, dividers and YouTube and docs, okay? But the biggest thing is that you always can double click. And if you have a URL, you can always add the URL in there. Also, I just remind you that the files that are in Drive have to have the same permission, okay? So we have, like I said, haven't gone over everything, but I do want to remind you on the slide deck, it has lots of resources. Um, this is the resource regarding Google Drawing. So you're like, what is this tool that she keeps talking about? I've never heard of it. Don't worry, we got your back. We do have some training on Google Drawing. We're almost done. I appreciate those that are hanging on, but this is my first time doing new sites in this large group. So I always have a lessons learned, how much time to go over. Um, so I apologize, but we're going to continue on. Um, with that, we have step six, which is preview share and publish your site we've done preview throughout the entire training here we know that what preview is is our bestie we're able to see it but we also have to know that it's very important that we can collaborate with multiple people um, and so we need to make sure we know how to share and invite other collaborators okay and how do we finally publish this site all right so let's go ahead and go back to our site and let's go up here i'm going to close some tabs here getting kind of tab anxiety. There we go. All right, so we can go to our, up at the top, we can share with others. So when I mean share, it means I want, in this case, when I'm talking about what my mind's thinking is I need help with this site. They want me to have this site in two days. I need people to help collaborate on the site at the exact same time, okay? Or they can do it when they have time, but I need collaborators, I need help, okay? So I am the owner in this account, Trainer13 is myself but I need help right now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add trainer one, or I could add my Google team if I wanted to, um, whatever the case may be, but I need help, okay? I'm also going to add the Google um, team as well. Oops. Okay, so now I'm making a conscious decision. I'm gonna take trainer one out. I'm just gonna do the, I'm sending it to my Google team. How, do, what do I want them to do? Well, I told you I needed help. Well, viewing it is not gonna really help me, right? I currently want people to help edit this site right now. So we talked about the shared drive. These people already had edit rights in my, in my drive, right? They had the folder infrastructure permissions, right? So now I want their help on the site as well. I could move this site into my folder infrastructure. I could, but I want to show you how to share on this end as well. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and click editor and I'm going to go ahead and hit send. I'm just going to uncheck them and not notify them right now, but that's what you can do. So now they're collaborators. They can help me. That's how I share. Let's look at the permissions just one more time. I'm going to click on the person. Now you can see that Google team 
is an editor. I'm an owner, which is Trainer 13. Um, the published site right now, if when published, it will be State of Iowa Access. Um, I don't want it to be State of Iowa Access. I want it to be um, public, okay? And I'll explain that more in a minute. I want it to be public. I can make it restrictive. This would be a great example of a portal, right? Um, OCO Connect would be by default be restrictive and shared via Google Group, okay? So in this case, that's not how this site is going to be built. It's going to be public, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit done. Okay, it's not published yet. It is just still out there, okay? We have not hit the famous publish button, all right? So let's go ahead and look at a few other things here. Let's go to the gear and let's make a, nope, I don't wanna do that. We're going to publish. We're going to go ahead and publish. So now we're gonna click, click the big purple icon at the top and we're gonna choose publish. Now we need to decide a web address, okay? So I'm just gonna say example, they might not like example. Uh, they don't like the word test. Let's just call it blah, blah, Google team, okay? Uh, oh, they don't like Google. Um, okay, so um, that's not a great web address. Don't use that. But I'm making that as my site, right? Blah, blah, help, okay? You would not use that. You'd use something else, right? That would make more sense. Then you'll notice since this site is public, you can make a conscious decision. This is very important. Some sites, such as the Octa site, such as the Google Help site, we don't really need it to be searchable, okay? We don't need it to be searchable, okay? So it's kind of like anyone with the link access, right? So you can request public search engines to do not display my site. I want it that way. I want, it, I want it to be quick and easy, no permission issue for people that do not have a Google account to access this site. But I really don't need it to be searchable by a, via google.com, um, bing.com, or anything like that. So public search engines do not display my site, okay? All right, that's your decision, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and hit publish. Now, let's look at the published site. You'll notice the drop down. you have view published site. You have published settings. Uh, let's go look at the published version. Now you'll notice this is the public version, um, very similar to the preview, but you no longer have the option to look at it in different mobile views, okay? All right. Now, since I am an editor of this site, I do have the pencil. But if I would take this to incognito window or to someone that's not an editor of the site would not see the pencil, okay? So I'm gonna click on the pencil. I can go back and make edits to the site. Let's just look at through the other options that we have up here. We do have the drop down and says publish settings. You do have, again, these are things that you have to adjust from. If this is your very first site, check this out. Again, we already made the default decision or not default, we made the conscious decision to request public search engines to do not display my site. Um, but we also wanna make that decision to review changes and publish, meaning that editors, now that I've added editors, right? I've added that team, um, the editors must review changes before publishing. So let's talk about that. So now the site is up and live and so on. So let's go to the homepage and let's make a decision that I don't like this yellow anymore. I want it to be white. Okay, and maybe I want to delete this divider line. Okay, and maybe I want to delete this calendar button. I made changes to this site, did I not? I made changes as an editor, could be any of those members. Now I go to preview and I can see those changes. Okay, that looks great. I'm happy the way it looks, but the public site is not changed yet. Okay, so you get like this work in progress, like a draft form, right? If this is what I want it to look like. Okay, and now I am now deciding I want to publish this on Friday or now or whatever the case may be. I can then click publish. Notice now I get to review the changes and publish. This is so nice now. 
So now you can see the draft, the rough draft. It no longer has the calendar. It's no longer the innoxious yellow and so much more, right? This is um, what is currently published. You can kind of see the before and after, right? So now I love my new view. We don't need the calendar on there anymore, et cetera. I can now hit publish. Okay, now the live view, if I go to publish, view, publish version, that's what it looks like for the public, right? So then last thing is, um, let's say I wanna add an announcement banner. Remember our website had an announcement banner. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the gear and I have an announcement banner. And I can, on the left-hand side, make an announcement banner. I can say show banner. I can make it blue. I can say check out shared drive training. And I could um, say learn more. And I can add the page to be shared drive or whatever the case may be. Okay. And I can decide home page only or all pages. Okay. All right. Now, that's still not the public version, is it? So this is the public version. It's not on there. So I made a change again, a change, right? So if I want that change to appear, I still need to hit publish. Now Google's telling me um, add announcement banner. Yeah, please do. We need to get that out and going, hit publish. Now there are times that maybe you don't want something, you made a mistake, that never happens, right? Um, you can actually um, go to the three dots, three dots in Google, we know what that means, Click on the three dots and you can see, you can go to version history. Don't we love this by now? Google has given this for so long and it's our best friend, right? You have the same concept here. So you can actually see this is the published version as of September 6th. Oh yeah, we don't want that banner showing right now, right? But the published version on this one has the banner. I think we need to restore it back to this site page or Restore to even this page version. You have an and or there, okay? So it does give you a lot of different options, even at the granular level. This is big. This is really big, because maybe you just need to make a change to that one particular page, not versus the entire site, okay? One last thing, let's add a footer, just so we know how to do that. Um, you can always click add footer at the bottom. This is very helpful. Um, so you can say um, call 800-532-1174 for more help, right? You can make it this as fancy as you want. You can make it uh, um, and so much more. So you can do what you want with this. You can um, center it and so on. And now obviously we made a change and we need to publish this and you can see add footer. And yes, I agree. And so we're good there. Um, let's look at the public version one more time. Um, so we have some things here we wanna make sure we're aware of. We put our navigation bar at the top, right? We have our different pages, so much more, right? It's not exactly like my demo, but the same concept, right? We've got the different uh, um, documents embedded. We can go to the training page. We can take these to the Google Meet training, okay? Not a wonderful site, but we got a lot of content added here um, as we go. Um, some other things, just quickly, you do have some undo, redo. Um, you can always copy the link. So maybe you wanna say, um, hey, you wanna quickly go to the site, you can always copy the link and then give it to them in chat. That's an option. Again, um, there is more in the gear. Um, we have your brand images, which falls under the theme concept, which we already have done. One of the things I do not talk about, um, you can um, enable analytics. Um, I would definitely do a ticket if you do want tick um, analytics and then get you set up with Google Analytics. Um, but you can do Google Analytics on Google Sites. Okay, I don't wanna spend time on that, but I do have some resources if you are interested in Google Analytics to get you to the right person. So please feel free to reach out to me on that. Um, but you can do so. We do that for most of our big sites. So don't be afraid to look at the gear. 
And the last thing is you do have in the three dots, you do have the option to make a copy. So if this is a template, let's say um, OCIO Connect theme template, you can always give them rights to make a copy of this if they want to, okay? Um, um, that's just a nice feature. Um, again, I would just strongly suggest making sure you understand the sharing. Um, I just wanna point that out one more time because that can get a little confusing. We have the people that have access to the edit portion of this particular one is um, the Google team and myself, which is trainer 13. The draft, which is the edit portion, is restricted. Okay, that means only these people above. Okay, I could take the draft form, which to these different levels, but I would not recommend that, right? But you do want to make sure you do have different options for the public version. Okay, the published version. Okay, you could always make it more restrictive if you choose to, because when you do share these, you can always just share it as a published viewer. This would be a great example if we do want to make this an OCIO Connect website. We would actually send this as OCIO Connect or OCIO Google OCIO all staff and give them published viewer rights, right? That's just viewer rights. They get to see the published version, right? And then this would be considered restrictive. So just be aware of that is a little different. Please check out the resources on the site if you need more help with that. And then I just wanted to let you know, we do have some of these other things that we did, which was demo the announcement banner, the footer, publish setter, and paint, making a copy that is there for you. And if you need some more ideas, these are great examples of new sites that we have used for OCIO on the Google Help website, the Help ID, the Okta website, and the G Secure are just examples of new sites. Some of them have been updated more than others, obvious reasons. Uh, so definitely if you wanna look and see how we did incorporate new sites, some of these were built in matter of minutes because we needed a new site. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, as always, we do appreciate you attending and thank you so much. And this video will be posted on our YouTube channel, broken down in chapters, because this is a long video. I've been talking for almost two hours. Um, so we'll definitely have this broken down in chapters, um, just about these different steps. So with that, I thank you. If you are joining live, please reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to assist you if you need more assistance. And with that, don't forget to check out the resources below when you watch this video on YouTube. If not, check it on the Google Help website. Um, with that, have a great, glorious day, and thank you so much.